Okay, so this is a demonstration of the Lullaby Jukebox. This is the final lab in the six lab series that teaches embedded programming. We started learning how to blink an LED doing output, and then we did input, and we learned how to scan this matrix keypad. This keypad is just a set of X and Y wires that get pressed together, and the microcontroller has to apply a voltage to each row sequentially and then see if any column has voltage on it to tell whether a key is pressed. And then we program the internal digital to analog converter to output a synthetic sine wave, basically 128 points that had been calculated to give a relatively good sine wave. And then the DAC just puts those points out at a regular interval, which gives you a sine wave going into a little audio amplifier to a speaker so we can hear it. And then in the next lab, we programmed a timer counter to divide down the 48 megahertz clock frequency so that we could control the speed at which the DAC output its sine wave. And that gave us a wide range of frequencies from sub-audible up to seven or eight kilohertz. Let us play tones and even music. In the next lab, we connected up a display. This is a two line by 16 character LCD display. This one's a little unusual in that you can control it either through SPI, RS-232, or I squared C, three of the major serial protocols used in the microcontroller world. And then in this final lab, we brought all these pieces together by taking each of the code we'd written for the other labs, putting it inside a real-time operating system called EMBOS. And the real-time operating system allows us to write an application like the Jukebox relatively cleanly where we have different functions or tasks. In this particular one, we have three tasks. We have one task that scans the keyboard, and if a button is pressed, it gets sent to another task that's the user task. That's the one that's in charge of the function of the Jukebox. For example, that's the one that puts some information on the display, but it also sends commands to a play task, and that's the one that controls the timer to put out different notes of different lengths, and that gives us our jukebox. So let's see how the jukebox works. When we turn it on, it displays a welcome message and plays a little tune to let us know it's ready for us to use it. Okay, so now we can go ahead and use our jukebox. So we have two lines on the display. The top one shows us the song we're looking to play. We're allowed to select that. That's actually controlled by the user task. And depending on which button I prick, that is Mary Had a Little Lamb. Number two is Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Number three is Rockabye Baby. Uh, then we have Amazing Grace on four, Row, Row, Row Your Boat, and Teddy Bear's Picnic. 7, 8, and 9, and 0 are available, but if we press them now, they don't do anything. If we select a song and press the Enter key, not only do we play it, but our jukebox flashes different colors just like a real jukebox. We can still select another song and enter it, and it gets placed in a queue, and when we're done with the current song, the next song gets played. And if we decide we don't want to hear any songs, there's a stop button that stops all the songs. Now I've added one more function and another task to this version of the jukebox. I've added a remote control. And we have a remote control receiver here. This is an IR receiver that outputs pulses in response to buttons. And those pulses are converted into characters. And there's another task that takes the binary value of the pulses and turns them into keys. So I can stand over here and press one, Mary comes up, press two, twinkle, twinkle, little star comes up. And we can play row, row, row your boat just by pressing enter. And we can always stop it by pressing the stop key. So we can control it either with the remote control or the keypad. What's nice about the real-time operating system is because we use message mailboxes, essentially queues, to send keys to the user task, whether those keys come from the keyboard task or the IR remote task is really not important. 
whoever shoves a character into that queue will cause the user task to read the character back out and operate on it. So adding a parallel control system was very easy with the uh, queues. We use a couple other features of the real-time operating system. Uh, we have something called task events, and those are simple binary signals. We've filled the play queue. We can play up to 16 songs, and we could be going along playing those. If we wanted to stop the play task, we need a way of telling it to stop. We can't just put a stop command in the queue because it's going to play all the songs before it sees it. So we have a parallel channel called a task event that's just a one or zero. And if we set that to one with the stop task, we stop playing almost immediately. It only checks it between notes, so we'll have to listen to the last note. We also have a keyboard beep if we press a bad key we get a triple beep. If we press a correct key, we get a one beep. And that's done with something called software timers. Rather than devote an entire task to doing beeps, what we do is we turn on the beep speaker, that is uh, this small buzzer here, and we start a timer and we say after a certain amount of time, turn the beep off and we use 50 milliseconds to get a nice beep. So we're using a number of features. The last important feature is the bottom line of the display is controlled by the play task. When we play a song, it tells us which song we're playing. And it needs to do that because it's playing songs asynchronously with every other task. When it finishes a song, it puts up a new one and says which one is playing. The top line of the display is controlled by the user task and whatever keys we enter either on the keypad or in the remote control. The problem is the way the display works is you send it a cursor positioning command and then the string you want to put on there. And in a real-time operating system like EMBOS, one task with higher priority can interrupt another. The play task has higher priority than the user task. So if the user task is in the middle of outputting a string, like whatever name of the song you've selected on the top line, and it were interrupted by the play task, putting the name of the next song on the bottom line, when we return from the play task to the user task, the user task would display the rest of the song name in the wrong place on the display. So we need a way of making this resource, the LCD display, exclusive to one task when it's using it. We use something called a mutex, a mutual exclusion flag basically, and when any either the play task or the user task wants to talk to the display, it issues a mutex, mutex which says, I'm going to use a resource, you can't use it. It proceeds to use that function, and then when it's done, it releases the mutex. And that way, you avoid the problem of interrupting an atomic operation. And these are some very standard features of almost every real-time operating system. And the nice thing is this real-time operating system is quite small, it's only a few K, and yet it's very powerful and makes it quite easy to write separate functions as tasks and put them all together to get a nice working system. I will leave you with a song or two, and I hope you get a chance to build this project and see how it works.